What is going on everybody? Today's video we got a little bit of a 3D scan, 3D model, 3D print in one and it's all gonna start right here. Now the reason this little 3D printed louver project is coming about is because I want to start printing higher temp materials so I got to modify my 3D printer uh, to kind of handle that. It's just kind of a you know skill I want to have. Two, the 3D modeling. You know, again, more practice doing 3D modeling stuff. And then three, from a performance standpoint, now that I have a flat floor on the car, if you think about it, when so there's my intercooler ducting, uh, there's my radiator duct. All the air that makes it through the grill kind of comes out the hood. So I think what is happening with the flat floor, the splitter, the ducting, it's just like an oven inside the engine bay. There, from a downforce perspective, you don't want extra air in your engine bay, but from a reliability standpoint, you, you kind of need a little bit of air movement so stuff just doesn't cook. So I think that's about enough of my kind of plan, my overview as to why I'm gonna be doing this. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. So as you can see, all these things around it are markers. So when I scan it, the scanner, I'm really only worried about, I don't know, the, the one inch around the perimeter where the flange of my model is gonna be. So the rest of all these pyramids, crumpled up bits of tape, tape rolls, whatever, are all just markers for the scanner to kind of lock onto so it won't lose track of where it is. All right, so I got the scanner hooked up. I use the Revo Point Pop 2. I'll put a link to this scanner in the description below. Uh, I really like this thing and kind of tell people about it whenever I get a chance to. But as you can see, here's our preview. In the top right, you can kind of see the actual picture picture. And you can see how it kind of picks up the you know, pieces of tape and the little 3D printed pyramids. Here's the tape roll, so that one's kind of obvious. So that's how the scanner kind of keeps track of where it's at. With my thumb, I just hit the play button on the scanner. And this is real time. You know, just kind of move your way along the part. And there's the corner. Hit the play button with my thumb again to stop it. And if we zoom out, looks like we lost a little bit at the end here. So you can always just backtrack a couple scans. And then what I'm gonna do is try and pick up on this piece of tape and come across the front here. So let's see if it does it. So looking at the top left of the screen, you can see the preview. Okay, it looks like it knows where we are. Oops, yelling at me for being too far. There you go. So that quickly, we have this little bit. All right, so that's where we're gonna stop real quick. But you can see how, you know, we got the scan of this little bit off camera. I'll do the rest, but it's done very similarly. So now we are going to import it into Revo Studio. To clean it up, we're going to clip a bunch of stuff. And we're going to leave the little bit of the strut tower bar right here that we get as well. So now this is ready to export. Alright, so here we are in Onshape, which is the CAD software I, I'm just familiar with. Importing it is pretty easy. It looks gray right now, but once you zoom in, you can see all the faces. And then there's the strut tower. And the reason they're different colors is the program, they're technically just different parts. So it just colors them differently. All right, so we're finally ready to model our louvers. On the left side here, um, I slid the rollback bar all the way up to the top and what we're going to do is just kind of walk through how I did it. Now again, CAD modeling is relatively new to me and I'm kind of self-taught so I appreciate any tips anybody may have. Where I started was the first plane that I built. 
I'll show you right here, was just a three point plane. Um, and you can see I just picked three points roughly spanning the whole opening, followed by an offset plane of only a half of an inch. So that way, this plane that I can kind of start drawing on is just above the surface of my scan. Then after that, just threw a Drew a couple 3D fit splines. Let's get these out of here. If I hover on them, you can kind of see where I drew them. I just outlined the opening roughly, and the corners of those 3D fit splines will be used in the next sketch. Which, if I turn this sketch on, oops, there you go. You can see I finally am outlining basically where I want the louvers to be. Then did an extrude and a couple more 3D fit splines. So the extrude is, you know, it's a surface. I think I have it hidden. There it is. So that surface where it intersects my scan will effectively give me a line, the exact curve that I need. Um, here, this side will show it really good. So there you go. So this 3D fit spline would be that one right there is your line to do your next step, which is your fills. So you can see now we have this surface right here. So let's get rid of that surface. So you can see now we have a surface, pretty much the exact shape that we need. Now it overlaps a tiny bit or underlaps on the underside, but in real world that would be less than a millimeter variance. And then at this point, a thicken of that surface and there we go we have our first surface to model on uh, you know what let me get rid of uh, I believe that was sketch one so I'm gonna hide that just to clean it up a little bit so there you go you can see we're finally building our surfaces that we need so let's jump a couple more planes plane three I think was yeah parallel to the back with sketch two is this line right here because I wanted it to be a half or I'm sorry an inch and a half off the surface of the hood then plane four was a point plane off of that inch and a half point parallel to I believe it was plane two at that point and then sketch three outlines the area we want the louver to be which sketch three oops sketch three if we bring back sketch one it is just this square right here projected up to the height that we need it so quick extrude down gives us that block Sketch four, five, and whoops, sketch four, five, and loft. So, sketch four, I'll bring these in. So, these sketches gave us this shape right here. So, we just did a loft remove of this shape right here, with the guides being this front curve. So, it you know, mates up nicely with what will be the flange in the next step. So you can see we're starting to take shape. We're obviously still a solid piece. So at this point, I had to do a few more sketches just to clean up the squareness of the edge. Because if you look down, when I was tracing that line, it's a little bit crooked. And you can see how we have a little bit of overlap here. So if we extrude remove, 
there you go you can see how we can just clean up this edge make it nice and straight I'm sure there might be a better way a couple previous steps to make that line straighter um, but that's how I opted to do it and then a shell so a shell function just kind of hollows out whatever you want and then going back to this shell function I don't know why I couldn't here let's drag the bar up you can see how we hollowed out the inside of it but like for whatever reason it wouldn't hollow out the floor or the bottom of it so what I ended up doing was filling a surface this thick and remove to remove the bottom of the louver and then I had to do it for that last little rear piece too again there's probably a better way to do that um, but CAD modeling kind of teaching myself tinkering with it I was able to achieve the end result I wanted uh, but I may have had to do a few more steps than necessary So at this point, we're going to jump ahead quite a bit. Just kind of did some fillets to, you know, let's hide all of our sketches, clean it up. Uh, let's hide all of our planes. There you go. So at that point, I just jumped ahead, you know, put a, put a few fillets on the corners and the edges. And there you go. Effectively, if you wanted a nice, simple, you know louver or ramp maybe even call it a gurney wicker whatever you want to call it there you go I decided to take it a step further and let's go down quite a bit added a couple vortex generators on it <laughs> Uh, this is just something since I can print it why not give it a shot if we click would it be this way you can see how we'll get vortices kind of going off these off to the side of the car is my hope to try and influence air over to the side um, again just kind of testing that out we'll see I can always print one out smooth as well and all of those steps I pretty much just did the same thing for each and every louver so I'm going to drag the rollback bar all the way to the bottom and there you go so there's all the pieces so each piece of the louver including the back little scoop part I did effectively the same exact way built my splines built a surface thickened it and then kind of hollowed them out but if we click on the back you know you can see how in real life you would be able to see the radiator down here and everything and yeah looks pretty good so that's about it for the modeling um, so at this point we're going to export them and 3D print them out. All right, guys. So here are all of my pieces printed out. These are these are just PLA because they're for mock-up purposes, just to make sure my model is correct. This one's obviously the front and I'm still just like amazed at like look how perfectly that fits that curve of the hood from the scan um, it'll probably sit right about there the second one is not that one this one which butts up perfectly and again the the angle just a little bit less a little bit less height the third one goes right there and this little flick right here again just trying to influence the air to go out you know sideways rather than as much up and over very small detail probably almost immeasurable um, and then the the rear goes right here 
And if you look at it, you know, everything looks really good to the model. Obviously the air out of the radiator. You know, I like how everything fits. But, there's always a but. In real world time, quite a bit of time has kind of passed since I started this project. I was able to go back and really dive into the wind tunnel numbers when this car was in the wind tunnel. Now we ran several configurations um, of hood and louvers and vents and all that stuff. And since I'm kind of trying to accomplish a few things, it's kind of hard to explain. I'm kind of trying to accomplish a couple things with redoing this radiator, louver, outlet, whatever. I kind of changed my plan since modeling and printing these. What I'm going to end up doing is we're going to end up running my original ducts uh, a little bit longer. If you look down in there, that hole that I cut right there, in terms of the engine bay, okay, yeah, you might get hot air from the radiator coming out through, might be easier if I do it this way, through this hole into the engine bay, which from a downforce perspective, you know, I might lose a little bit, but I will pick up a little bit of cooling, which I've kind of always had. Uh, this car is borderline with the cooling setup, with the radiator ducts and everything. I don't have the right hand one printed out, so we'll use this side for now, but this radiator duct, I did the same thing where the little hole will be cut out to let a little bit more air into the engine bay. We'll kind of go right along the side here. That's where the heat issues are with the turbo right back there. That was the um, coupler that ended up blowing out from, I think from just getting too hot. It did have about five years on it, so. And one of the tests that we did in the wind tunnel was putting little gurneys in front of here, which did help. This should help quite a bit more. So I think the car's cooling should improve a little bit as well as letting a little bit of more air into the engine bay. Um, both sides have about the same cut right in that area to let some air into the engine bay. I'm gonna kinda like split the difference between my two ideas of like keeping my radiator ducting, um, which didn't provide the best cooling in the wind tunnel, but it was the most efficient because the least amount of air was just getting in the engine bay, under the car, all that stuff. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. So we're gonna go head up to the print room real quick. All right, so we got the printer back up and running. So here is the, which way would this be? Passenger side. Um, gotta print out the other one and keep moving. All right, so now with the part ready, test fitted, we know we're good. And all we're gonna do, I'm just gonna put a couple rivets in it. I'm gonna go ahead and rivet it. If you wanted to, you could, Use something like nut certs, uh, or shoot, even nut and bolt it. If you wanted it like removable, testing out different sizes, or you want to just, you know, adjust it for whatever reason. Since I just got the one race left this season coming up, I'm just going to rivet it and like call it good. You know what? I'm going to have to countersink that. Because when I drilled it, it kind of like came up a little bit. I'm just going to use a big drill bit. There we go. Get rid of that little bit of a lip. All right guys, so there they are, all done. Finished up, ready to go. So a combination of these and that little hole right there, cooling shouldn't be an issue at this power level. So that's where I'm gonna wrap this one up. It was a cool little uh, you know, 3D scan, 3D model, 3D print, in one video again. So if you like this one, please give this video a thumbs up. If you aren't subscribed, please hit that button down below. As always, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next one.